Okay, so as always, if you need to unmute or pop anything into the chat, uh, go ahead and speak up. Um, we're going to do a lot of side bending or well, like a spine lengthening sort of things, just trying to create and open up space and lightness. I was listening to a podcast this morning. It's called On Being by Krista Tippett. It's uh, really lovely. She speaks with um, religious and philosophical, religious and philosophy uh, experts, if you can be an expert on such things. And they were discussing today how there's been this major shift in our social justice culture over the last couple of months and how it's become very clear to us. I love this, this phrase. We are now no longer able to tolerate intolerance. No longer able to tolerate intolerance, right? Like I just, I love that. Um, I just realized the video is a little off. Here we go. Okay. Um, but if we think about like what intolerance feels like, it feels like there's some thing that we have to hold on to. Like we have to hold on to this grudge, hold on to this idea that whatever it is that we're intolerant of is just definitely wrong and bad and evil. And, and sometimes we can be, you know, I want to be intolerant of intolerance, but we can't just sit there and, and, and be okay with having this feeling of holding on to this, ugh, you know? Like, oh, there's something wrong in the world, but I'm not sure what I can do about it. So I'm just going to sit here and stew in it. Or, oh, I'm so angry about this thing. And so I'm just going to hold on to this anger and let it weigh me down and let it make me small and let it stress me out. And when I'm small and I'm stressed out, I'm not the best version of myself. And therefore, I am not the best. I am not a, a self that's going to help to create change and growth and move past this intolerance to try to create a better world. I just thought would be the change sort of system. I was reading some really good stuff um, by Brene Brown about that too, just about how the way that we interact in the world, if we can continue to be this, be this example, um, to really lead out with our best self. So I'm going to try to create this lightness in our practice today um, to be a little bit more open. And my last little um, anecdote that I thought was really interesting over the weekend, um, a lot of friends who are not pleased with the president and then there was the COVID diagnosis or positive test um, that he got. And I was a little bit nervous about seeing what folks would be saying about this. And I was just like, oh man, please don't like take all of this terror and madness into your heart and wish bad things about another person. It's just, it doesn't, no good, no good, right? And I went in and I was just like, you know, scrolling through, I'm um, checking on some people and overwhelmingly, with exception, people said, I cannot wish for this person to die, even though I don't like them. I hate that they're in power. I hate that this happened to them and those things don't have to um, negate each other. I don't want anybody to have to deal with this. I don't want anybody to be that sick. I don't want to see suffering come to anybody. And it was like, you know, the yoga teacher inside me was like, yes, okay, cool. <laughs> that's, that's a pervasive idea that's becoming a little bit more common. Like hopefully we're, we're seeing more and more of this happen in our circles where we see much less tolerance of intolerance, much less tolerance of anger, much less tolerance of bad mouthing and uh, naysaying and doom scrolling whatever's um, whatever is pervading our existence because it just feels so much better not to be mad, right? so much better not to hold hate in our hearts. Hate is heavy, it's hot, it hurts. No good for anybody. So we'll start off with some face brushing. Take your index finger and your thumb together. Start at the center of your forehead and brush outwards towards your temples. And then taking the, um, that thumb space to the sides of your nose and brush out to your temples along your cheekbones. And from the temples, brushing down to your chin along your jawline. And from the sides of your nose down to your chin along your laugh lines. And bringing your fingertips back and behind your ears, kind of coming underneath back to that bony spot and lifting up from that bony spot, feeling the lightness in your back, a little bit of elevation and support. And 
take another big breath in and try to stay lifted like that as you rest your hands down into your lap. With the palms open in this gesture of being open to receive. With the palms relaxed, not gripping and holding on to anything, especially that which does not serve us. Just take a few deep breaths, tuning into your body. And then take a big breath in through your nose and exhaling through your mouth. Again, like that. For three, all. Ah. Ah. Once you start to blink your eyes open, come to a really comfortable, easy way for you to see. So sitting like this is great. If you want to pop up on a chair or something, you're welcome to do that. You can have your legs out in front. For me, this like kind of in-between wide and narrow space feels pretty good, especially seated up on a chair. You just want to be somewhere where you don't feel a lot of tightness in your hips. And you can bend the legs, have the feet towards each other as well. Whatever seems like it just resonates and feels easy and light in your body. And then you're going to take your right hand over towards the right side and then reach up and over through your left side. You want to get this reaching action rather than just trying to fold it. So you're really opening up. Rest the inside of your collarbone. Rest your left hip down. Take a breath in and a breath out. And then you're going to lift up and you're going to reach that left arm out to your side. Let the palm face down to start and then turn your nose down towards your chin. Take an exhale and then turn your palm to face forward and up so you get a little bit different stretch. Finish your exhale. And then roll your chin down to your chest. Take your hand up. And then reach your hand back and a little bit more stretch in the front of your chest. And when you're done with that, go ahead and take your hand down by your side. So we'll let that left hand walk out a little bit and then reach up and over through your right side. And notice if your shoulder's pinching in, can you rest the inside of the shoulder and send that shoulder blade forward? Relax your right hip down. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. And then you're going to lift up. So you're going to sit up mostly even, and you're going to reach actively through the fingertips with the palm facing down, and then roll your nose down towards your shoulder. Soften your jaw muscles. Finish your exhale, and then change the palm so that it faces forward, maybe even slightly up. Big inhale and exhale. At the end of your exhale, roll your chin down towards your chest, start to lift the head up. And then you're gonna reach that palm back, stretching open through your chest a little bit more. And then go ahead and set the hand down. You're gonna reach your arms up. And when you get your arms reached up, make sure that you're not leaning back. So you might even take your arms out in front of you so you can lift a little bit more through that back body, the strong skeleton supporting you. Take an inhale. And as you exhale, side bend over towards your right side and reach up through the left. When you inhale, come back to the center, lift both arms up. They might have to sneak forward again. And then exhale, side bend over towards the left. And then inhale, come up. And exhale, side bend over towards the right. Inhale up. Make sure you're softening the insides of the shoulders. Exhale, side bend. 
So do this a few more times. If you want it to be a little stronger, don't put those fingertips on the floor. You can hover them. So I'll just take a little bit more core strength that way. So you get to decide if that feels too intense, if that is too uncomfortable. And if it is, you just put the hand back down. Take one more round on each side. See if you can reach a little bit further. Then come on up. And if it's best for you to leave the legs like this, not coming back into crisscross applesauce, you can, or you can fold your, um, fold your legs back into where we began in our seat. Take your hands to your heart, close your eyes. Just notice if there's any change, if there's any extra lightness in the side body, if you feel stronger. Start to open your eyes. We're gonna come down onto our back. So if you're seated up on anything, go ahead and move it. We're gonna come all the way down. Knees bent, back on the mat. Just let yourself be heavy. Put your arms out somewhere that's comfortable. Might let the weight shift around hip to hip. Just give yourself a few moments to settle into the back body. And then take your right leg. You're going to hold on to it in a way that's comfortable for you. Some of us have the shin comfortably. Some of us would feel better holding on to the thigh from behind the knee. And then you're going to let your left leg stretch out as much as it wants to. It might only go out a little bit. It might get more or less straight. Wherever you get to, it seems like it's a good place for your body to be. It doesn't introduce any unnecessary tension. Just trying to allow the legs to split open. Rest your right hip down. Sometimes it kind of sneaks off to the side. One more breath in, one more breath out. And then you're gonna take the right leg with your left hand, open your right arm out to the side and come into a twist. Try to rest your foot on your thigh, unless that doesn't feel so good to you to have your knee bent that much. You're gonna take this thigh over and you're gonna use your hand to move that thigh bone down away from your hips. We're creating a little bit more space in the side pants area. And every time you exhale, relax your right collarbone so that shoulder opens up. Keep thinking of this whole right thigh bone going down towards your left butt. Stay there for two more breaths. Big exhale. Releasing that twist, setting the right foot down, drawing that left leg back in, coming back to the middle, taking a moment to let your back relax into the floor beneath you. And then taking your left leg in, holding it somewhere that feels good on your leg, easy to grab onto. And start to let that right foot go forward, maybe a little bit, maybe the leg gets more like straight. Just as an exercise in awareness, notice how short the left side of your waist feels compared to the right side of the waist. And just kind of ask yourself, like, what happens if I drop that left hip down a little bit more? Is it hard? Is it weird? Does it hurt? Does it seem to help open up those sides? One more breath in and out. Soften with your exhale. And I'll take the right hand over to the left thigh. We're gonna turn this into a twist. And when you get there, you're gonna use your hand to guide that thigh lower. So I've got more space in between my ribs and my hip. A little bit more space on the side of the waist. The left arm will open up. I'm gonna always come out of it a little bit if your lower back is creating, too, is feeling too much tension. Going deep into a twist, you can always back off and allow the belly to soften. But do keep trying to release that left thigh bone down towards the right foot and the left collarbone open towards the floor. Good 
big breath in. Big breath out. One more full round of breath. And then start to come back to the center. You're gonna set the left foot down, draw the right leg in. Just wiggle whatever needs to be wiggled until you find your body steady, resting even on the floor. Feeling this grounded connection. And then starting to slide the feet out so they're about mat width apart or a little bit wider than your hips and take your arms and reach them back so it's about mat width apart or a little bit wider than your shoulders. And as you inhale, reach out through your limbs, feel yourself opening and filling it as you exhale, just let the body and the intensity deflate. One more time, inhale, fill it up. Exhale, let it go. And then you're gonna take your right ankle and cross it over your left ankle. And if your hip lifted up a little bit, try to relax it down a little bit more. So you've got both hips mostly on the ground, and releasing this side down towards the floor. And then your right hand's gonna come over towards your left hand. And you're gonna hold the right wrist with your left hand so you can get a little extra traction, extra space. Yes, your elbow can be bent if that feels better. But see if you can find some length. Let your belly drop back towards the floor beneath you just to be sure you aren't creating an unnecessary back bend. Your top leg, your right leg, you might even reach out through those toes to get a little bit more sensation if that's what you're seeking. One more breath in, one more breath out. And then release your arms, go ahead and open them back up. Open your right leg over towards the right side so you find that X shape in your body and then cross the left side over. Reach the left arm over. If your hips lifted up, just relax it down. You don't have to force it down. It doesn't have to be all the way down. Just give it the space to. You'll hold on to the left wrist, giving a little traction out of that shoulder, softening the inside of the shoulder as you do so. Be reaching out through the left toes. If any of this is too much, you back off from that space. space. You just sit with where you can tolerate, where you can be with your breath and the experience. Big breath in. Big breath out. Relax your arms. Unwind the legs, go ahead and reach yourself out one more time. Inhale, fill the body up. And exhale, let it go. And then you're gonna roll over onto your belly. When you get there, make a pillow for your head with your hands, just rest your forehead or a cheek down and let your pelvis definitely wiggle out side to side. Finding some cobra poses will often cause a little bit of tension in the back. We've created a lot of space, creating a long back. See if you can still find an open, long cobra pose. Go ahead and slide your hands back through your little ribs. We're going to use the length we've created to extend the toes back and the heart forward. You might even feel like your rib cage is kind of creeping forward towards the front of your mat, that traveling like a serpent feeling. One more inhale, reach those toes back and down. Exhale, lower. We'll go one more time. If you like, you can lift your hands up and hover them off the floor or come to fingertips. So inhale, coming up. And it's even harder if you do take less of the hands on the floor in order to try and find that length. So instead of just holding ourselves up and back, can you propel your heart space forward and still take a breath in, lowering down as you exhale. So push into the hands, press ourselves up and back into child's pose. It can be puppy dog pose instead. Of course, it never matters how far your hips get back. So go ahead and reach the arms forward, resting the forehead down. And then widen your hands about the width of the mat. Take your left hand over towards your right hand and push down into both hands. So you get more space open on the left side of your ribs, find some place to rest your head so that there's no tension in the neck. Rest that left hip back, big exhale. 
and then take your left hand over to the left side and take your right hand over to the left side. Find a place to rest your head. Reach out through the right hand and back through the right hip. One more round of breath. And start to uncross your arms. We're gonna draw ourselves up into table pose. If you need to pad up your knees anymore, you can. We're gonna take a little cat cow and then one pose on the knees. So not, not too much, but you might wanna give yourself some extra space. Let's go ahead and roll through these cat and cows. Inhale, opening up the front body. Exhale, opening up the back body. And especially with as much side work as we've been doing, if it seems more intuitive to take a side to side look over the shoulder cat and cow, of course, making those adjustments in your practice so you're doing the right things for your body right now. Just move with the breath. Move through the spine. Take one more round or however many you need in order to even yourself out if you've been doing some uneven work. And then come back to right center. We'll just thread the needle, taking the right arm underneath, resting on the outside of the shoulder. You can take the elbow up if you want to get a little bit more space along the upper back. That feels pretty good to me where I'm still supported by my hand. And rest your thigh bones inside of your hip sockets. Whatever tension is there, give it permission to leave. No, thank you. This is a fairly familiar shape to many of us. So remind your body, it's like, oh, it's okay, we've been here before, we can soften, it's all right. One more exhale. And then whatever you've done with the left hand, return it back so that you can come back up into table pose. And then you'll slide the left side underneath. So you rest on the outside of the shoulder, maybe coming up to fingertips. What that does is it kind of flares the elbow up a little bit more. It just feels like there's more space along the back of the rib cage on my body. Notice where your hips are going. Notice what kind of resistance is there in the body. And then let that resistance pass. Two more breaths. Then start to come out. You'll place the right hand down, place the left hand down, spread out your fingertips, push from the outer shoulders down to those hands. All that space we've created in the low back and the upper back, using it as you come up into downward facing dog. We'll go into a forward fold next. You can manage staying here for another breath if your body will allow it. If you feel like it's beneficial, just take an inhale, relax the back of your head. Exhale, big loud sigh. And then we'll go wide feet. So feet maybe about that width or wider than the hips. Hands come back, bend into the knees. If you need to create a little bit more softness, you can come up with your hands on your shins, especially if you're feeling like we've been upside down for a while, which we have. Just notice what your body needs. You're just gonna take, if you have your hands on your shins, you're just gonna lean the hips over towards the right a little bit. If you've got your hands down, try walking your fingertips over towards the left too. So just an option of what might also help to open up that outer right hip. And then you'll take it over to the other side. So either fingertips are up and you just kind of bump that hip over, or you've got the fingertips all the way over. Good. One more exhale, and then come back to the center. You're gonna wiggle the feet in a little bit closer, bring your hands up to your shins or about where your knees are, and we're gonna spin the heart forward and the tail back, finding that long open spine, just like we did when we were in cobra pose, which is kind of hard right now. We've just done all of that strong work in the back. One more inhale, feel the heart reaching forward. One more exhale, draw that belly in, expand yourself all the way up. Okay, we're gonna take the, you're gonna take your 
right foot, gosh, you're gonna cross it back behind. So I've got a little bit more space than I might usually here. Okay. Got it over, right? So all we're gonna do is take the hands to the hips and then lean the hips over and lean the heart forward. Kind of weird, but it's hopefully gonna get right up at the very top of the IT band. I push like this back corner out, mm, right there. Yeah, and I'm leaning forward. Come on up and try the other side. So I do have my legs pretty crossed. They're not super far away, right to left. The front leg is bent. I have to lean forward to allow this little twist where I push like, like if, you're, if your bum had a corner, where would the corner be? And the corner pushes out. You know? Big breath in, breath out. Go ahead and lift yourself up. And uncross your legs. Widen your legs. Let the toes face forward and come down into a fold, either bringing your fingertips down, your fingertips to your shins, or dropping all the way down through the spine. Maybe relaxing your inner thighs just to open up a little bit more through the backs of the hips. Big breath in, big breath out. And take your hands back up to the hip, take your time, long spine, coming all the way back up to standing. And we'll turn the right toes up to the right, turn the left toes in slightly, come into warrior two. Then take your arms open. Make sure that the knee is tracking without going beyond the toes, just going in the same direction. Think about what you would, how would you describe the way the front of your chest feels in this position? And then turn your palms up. Notice what kind of changes happen. For me, it really rolls the chest more open without having to go into a crazy back bend. See if you can keep that, if you like it at least, as you turn the palms back down. Big inhale, big exhale. Reach out over your right leg, take the elbow down, make sure you're not falling into the shoulder, and then reach up and open through your left side, thinking about outside of that shoulder up to the fingertips. Now for bonus points, you're gonna push down into the back foot, feel your belly wrapping up so these low ribs draw in slightly. It's a little spicy. Last exhale. And then you're gonna come back to warrior two. Straighten the front leg. Bring your left hand to your left hip. You might even sneak it up so that you can use that hand to feel the rib cage drift, drifting upwards. And then let your heart creep up towards your fingertips. Peaceful triangle. My right hip is relaxed down. The left hip is relaxed gently forward, much like triangle, which we will go to now. Go ahead and reach out over that leg, taking your hand down somewhere that's comfortable to you. And then roll your collarbone open. You can stay here with at the hand at the hip. Maybe you reach the arm up, or maybe you find more of that side body space reaching out. You can't fold it over, well you could, but we want a long spine, we have to reach out. Tailbone goes back, back there, yep. Breathe in, breathe out. And take yourself all the way back up. Turn the toes forward. Take your hands back behind your back. We're not gonna fold, we're just gonna stay here and release the chest for a moment. See if you can release the pinky toe edges of your feet down towards the floor, getting a little bit of calf or outer shin stretch. Exhale, then release your hands. I'm gonna turn the feet over towards the other side, Let those uh, right toes in, bend into the left leg, fine, warrior two. Be mindful that you're not setting into the back space, that you're creating length and lifting through the back. Notice how this feels. Inquire what it feels like when you change the palms to face up. And then 
and see if you can keep that feeling when you turn the palms to face back down. Breathe in, breathe out. And reach out over the front leg, take the elbow down and that right arm up and over, just slightly shadowing the face. And as much as you're reaching outwards through those fingertips, you're pressing down into that back foot. Soften these little ribs in. Space in the back, not really a back bend. Breathe in, breathe out. Start to draw yourself up. I'm gonna come back through warrior two and then straighten the front leg and that little tilt in the hips. The left hand or the right hand to the right hip and then the left hand lifts up, the heart lifting up. This hip slightly lower, this hip slightly forward. Inhale. Then reach out, exhale from triangle pose. Open that collarbone, ear is away from your tailbones. The spine is nice and long. Maybe the arm comes up, maybe it comes up and over. Make sure you're reaching out. You start to feel that curving. And we're losing some of that length, the strength length. Breathe in, feel that tailbone reaching back, breathe out, and start to take yourself all the way back up. We're gonna bring the feet back towards each other. And then cross your right leg close behind your left leg. I'm gonna fold forward and you might come down to where your fingertips are just at your shins. You might need to bend into one or both knees in order to feel okay here. Maybe if your fingertips come to the ground, you walk your fingertips over towards the left side. If you can get them over towards the left side and push more into your right foot, it's gonna really release that outer IT band space. Okay. We're gonna come back to the center. If you did any sort of reaching over to one side, try to come up to standing with your legs crossed and then uncross and cross the other way. So we'll take this down into a fold. You can soften wherever you need, hold on to your shins, hold on to the floor, whatever seems like a good plan. Even though this side might be different than the other side. And then maybe you bring your hands over towards that right side. Breathe into whatever space you're in. And come back. Towards the center, we're going to try to stand up with the legs crossed. Open the legs. We're going to come into a goddess squat or Buddha squat. The knees and the toes out. Don't try to get all the way 180 degrees. My feet can go that way, but my knees can't. My knees need to be there. So I'm going to just honor that in my body. Did a lot of lengthening of these spaces. Hopefully, I can lengthen out to this nice open space. Let's find lightness even here. Goddess and Buddha squat are most people's in no way a crowd favorite. But it's a good way to strengthen and tone these powerful legs that walk us through the world. So can we find lightness even here? Can we find the purpose and the joy in this experience? Take a breath in, breathe out, and then we can let that go. We'll do a little bit more standing balancing. You're gonna take the, um, this will take tree pose. It's gonna get fancy, it looks not get fancy. Just take one foot up, pick one at the thigh or at the calf, wherever you go. And you're gonna lift up through the front of your hip. Just make sure you're not going back and can, um, condensing the strong back space you've been lifting up. You can take your arms and reach them forward. I'm not leaning forward, I'm just, Reaching forward. Yep. Still with breath. One more breath in. And then rest the hand down, rest the leg down. Do a little shake and shimmy. And then finding the other side. So you do want to reach that knee up so you can lift the front of the hips and still have that strong lower core connection. Keep the back side of the body lifting. Make this offering of yourself to move just slightly forward not to shrink back and let ourselves be small. 
out into the world to be that change that we wish to see, to cultivate that good light in our own hearts as it may shine out. Breathe in. And relax your arms, relax your feet, move things around a little bit. Bring your feet a little bit wider than your hips. Just let your arms hang down. Just kind of like shake your shoulders. Let them go. Maybe you like bounce on your heels a little bit. If you really just want to kind of let things just release from the body. And then just a little bit more work around in the neck and head, standing up here, trying to kind of lift up gently through the fronts of the hips, keeping that core stability. Relax your right ear over towards your right shoulder as you breathe out. Stay there as you breathe in. And exhale your nose down towards your shoulder. Stay there as you breathe in. Exhale your chin down towards your chest. Take a nice slow inhale to lift your head up. And exhale, left ear over towards the right shoulder. Notice how you're standing in the rest of your body. Breathe in. And exhale, nose down towards your shoulder. Stay there, breathe in. Exhale, chin down towards your chest. And inhale, lift your head up. We'll do that again. Try to keep this lightness in your spine. And just relaxing the ear over towards the shoulder. Stay there as you breathe in. Nose down to the shoulder as you breathe out. Staying for the breath in. Chin down to the chest as you breathe out. Lifting the head as you breathe in. And exhale the left ear over towards the left shoulder. Breathing in. Nose down to the shoulder, breathe out. Stay there, breathe in. Chin down to the chest. Breathe out, inhale, lifting back up. And if you're in a space that's not by the front of your mat, we're gonna go there. I'm gonna do just a little half sun salute and come back into downward dog. If downward dog's not a good place for you, if you don't wanna be on the hands, just come right into child's pose and try to find that length in your arms that we would have in down dog. Toes facing forward, feet about hip width distance apart. Take a big breath in, feel all of the space you've created, reaching your arms up. And as you exhale, fold forward, relax your legs as much as you need to in order to let that back relax. And then inhale, roll the shoulders back, but really send that heart forward, nice and long and strong through that torso. And we'll plant the hands down, shoulder width apart, walk the feet back, take as many steps as you need, and feel that length in your spine. Bend the knees if you like, try not to lift the heels up though, but reach the hips back, Lengthen nice and strong through that spine. We're reaching from the outer armpits into the palms. Relax your head. Maybe there's one more exhale. And then take it nice and easy. Down to the ground in a child's pose. Untuck those toes. Let your hips settle back. If you had an active child's pose, now you're resting. We're all finding a way to rest the head. Maybe it's on the forearms. So you might even bring those hands in. Feel the breath changing the back to the ribs. One more breath in. One more breath out. Start to walk your hands back in. Come on up to a seat. And swing the legs out, holding them out, maybe a little bit wider than before, or maybe you are already finding that wide space was a good way for you to sit when we begin. Do take the balls of your feet and reach them out. So we're opening up this inner thigh space. We've done a little bit of twisting, it gets a little bit tight. Just take your hands somewhere that supports you and feel the balls of your feet reach out. Your legs don't even have to be straight. You have them up here. Just feel the balls of the feet reaching out. Keep letting the heart float up and forward in the rib cage. Breathing in. Breathing out. Relax that. Take your right leg and leave your left leg out. So you're going to reach out through the ball of that foot. So you can make the leg maybe a little bit straighter, even if you kind of lean over into that hip to let it be straight. I'm gonna lean it out. And then you're gonna take this arm up and over. Don't worry about the side space. Just let that back release forward. So 
a little bit more of a fold than we might usually take. So you can reach out through the ball of that foot. Finish your exhale. You're gonna back off a little bit, come up, flex the foot, try to reach out through the heel and then come out and over the leg. Breathing in, breathing out. And then lift yourself up. You're gonna take this hand down. You're gonna like let your hip, let just this hip roll up and lift up or come all the way up into stargazer. Reach out through those left toes. Big breath in, roll your heart up and then release your hips down. Shake out your wrists and switch the feet. So we'll start the ball of the foot reaching out, lengthening the front of the shin, taking this arm up and over and then soften inward. So a little bit full, a little bit side bend. I think of releasing this kidney space. Last exhale. And then back off so that you can change the foot. Now you're reaching out through the heel. And then we'll come again into this kind of side bend, kind of fold, soften the belly. Big exhale. Lifting up, taking the hand down. You can stay here where you just kind of like stretch yourself out with a little bit less intensity on this back hand or push up, up and away, stargazer. Feel your body lengthening whichever version you've chosen. And then rest the hips down. Take the legs out. If you liked reaching the toes out, if that felt good to you, you can do that. You can flex the feet, you can relax the feet if that's where you need to be. Take your hands in front of you. If you really feel like it's best to have your hands behind you to keep you self lifted, you can. If you can take your fingertips forward, and let your lower back release a little bit more. Maybe you walk the hands much further forward. Maybe you're down on forearms. If you find a space where there's resistance and pressure, just give your back the opportunity to relax. Like, hey, buddy, just soften. Maybe thinking of the kidney space, relaxing and drifting away from the spine on each side. Big breath in, big breath out. Starting to walk the hands in. You're gonna take your right leg and cross it in. And then your left leg's gonna cross up and over. Now, if this creates a little bit too much off putting space in your hips, you can take this bottom leg and stretch it out so we come back to this seated twist that we might take a little bit more commonly. This might be a little bit more opening in your hips. If you feel like it's beneficial, you can stay here. We'll hold onto the top knee, take the left hand directly back behind us. And then this twist is going to be a softening inwards. So I wanna try not to curl in, but can I soften this front space inwards? One more breath in and out. Relax your twist. We're just gonna switch the cross of the legs. So you might have that bottom leg extended. You might fold it in. You do wanna to try to get both hips mostly down. You might have to adjust some flesh and whatever you need to do in order to get it to feel right on your body is good. So you'll hold onto your thigh. The, left, the right hand comes behind and it's that soft lean of the front body to rotate. One more full round of breath. And then start to release that shape. We're gonna come down into fish pose. So you'll come down onto your forearms. Push down into your forearms, the chest lifts up, the collarbones open, the head goes back as much as it likes. You could have straight legs, bent legs feels good to me today. One more inhale. And exhale, release it down. Go ahead and roll back onto your back. Set the soles of the feet down. Rest your arms. Maybe do a little shifting around to massage and relax the back tissues. Ah. 
we'll take the knees up and into the chest. And then you're gonna open your knees up, bring your feet towards each other. See if you can keep your feet mostly towards each other and hold on to your ankles or towards your shins. It's okay if the feet aren't perfectly together, especially if you're holding your shins. But if you're able to create this reclined bound angle pose where you are actually bound up to the space, you get a little bit more relief in that upper butt or lower back space. like happy baby with feet together. Breathing in. Breathing out. And we're gonna change it into happy baby. So you're gonna reach the feet up, hold your shins or your feet or the hands behind the thighs. Probably it's a little bit harder to let the, let the hips be heavy. So just do what you can to offer that as an opportunity in your body. You don't have to force things, and it also doesn't have to be as drop down as it was in the last shape. It's not the same shape, not the same experience. Can't judge it the same way. Breathing in, breathing out. And then you're going to release the feet back down onto the floor. Now take your right leg, go ahead and hold it in. There's a little wiggle around. And then you're gonna flex that foot, take your right arm inside of your leg and try to hold the outside of your foot. It might be the shin for a lot of us. You can even roll over so that your left hip is lifted so you can make it out to that right foot if that feels good to you. Here's where things get a little spicy, choose your level. You're gonna move your foot a little further away. For me, just that couple of inches helps to make this feel better. It doesn't even open it up that much. It just feels more balanced. If you feel like you wanna open this up more, you might slide that leg up, which makes this situation intense and this situation right here at that inner thigh intense. Where there is compression, think softness. So less concrete, more angel food cake. Uh-huh, okay, you can roll over onto that hip. That's helping things feel less tense. Breathe in. Breathe out. Slowly release your foot. Take both feet down. Cool, just get a moment to reorient in space. I felt wildly uneven and I wanted to the other side. Go ahead and bring your left leg in. Give it a little wiggle. And then you're gonna take the arm inside of the shin to hold on to the shin, ankle, the foot. Find the space that works for you. I don't know about you, but just that little bit, like that feels less intense than having the foot closer. That could be different on you. Oh, the foot is kind of like, yeah, right. Like, why did that feel easy? Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. Maybe the foot goes further away. It might not even go as far away. It doesn't need to. It doesn't need to be straight. Your body, your limb, your joint, your desire for intensity versus a soft, easy space. You can go over towards the hip here. As long as that doesn't hurt, go for it. Breathe in. Soften something as you breathe out. Relax your foot and your knees, step the foot down. Take both feet down, widen your feet out a little bit. Let the knees roll in towards each other. Let your arms open out to the sides. Take this moment to settle. And starting with your feet on the floor, go ahead and roll your legs over towards the right and close them up as much as you like. So we start with a little bit more open, that way we don't go too closed unless that's what the body's asking for. Push into the back of your right arm just for a moment to roll that right shoulder or left shoulder open. Soften as you exhale. Take two more deep breaths. Turn to come back to the center, 
bring the feet back in, roll your knees over towards the left side, closing them in as much as feels good. Not worried about how far it gets wound in. Push a little into the back of the left arm to relax the right shoulder. And then on your next exhale, just relax everything. Two deep breaths. Start to unwind, coming back to the center, bringing the feet down, wiggling out until you feel balanced in the center. The arms come down a bit more. You could stay here with bent knees or slide those legs out to Shavasana. Of course, if there's another pose, take another pose that you need. Wiggle those heart, shoulder blades a little bit more underneath the heart just to let that heart be open and relaxed. Rest very well.
start to come back to your body. Gently moving back to consciousness. Staying easy and light with yourself as you explore any small movements that your body's calling for. When you're ready, start to roll yourself over to one side. Pause for a moment in gratitude for your practice and for all of this good work we get to do together. When you're ready, find your own version of a comfortable seat. Sit however you like, however it makes sense to you. With your hands at your heart, your heart lifted and open. We seal our practice, releasing one ohm together. Big breath in. Oh. Bowing down to the love and light that resides within each of our hearts, within all hearts. Namaste. Thanks everyone. Thank you so much, April. Thanks, April. Thanks. Have a good week. Will do. Take care, everybody. Is this your new digs? It is. A new place. Probably going to keep decorating and changing things, but as it is, this is. Looks yeah. cool. Very pretty. <laughs> and it's quiet. It's very quiet. Have a good one. Yeah, it's good stuff. Bye. Bye, Mark. <laughs>